welcome to Creative Block. I'm your host, V. Gene is out doing some Q-bomb stuff. He'll be back soon, don't worry. Uh, in the meantime, I am still manning the show. Um, so we interview people in creative industries about their life, work, and hobbies while we do Dole Jam. We asked people on Twitter if they had specific topics they wanted us to discuss, as well as some drawing prompts. And today we have Megan Fisher. Hello. Hey. Hi, V. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on the show. This of is course. so exciting. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of your work, V. So. Thank what? you for having me. This is an honor. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. I'm a big fan of your work. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny because we met back when you were still at Disney TV and we I lived on the house in Pasadena mm -hmm. with Kevin Bailey and Teresa Potts and uh we had all the parties and I didn't really know you that well at the time and then we like met on Thundercats 4 and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And yeah, and now we're all the storyboard artists on Thundercats 4 were in a very small room together, so we all got very close, and we're all still friends to this day. We're like a little family, so I'm grateful to that show. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. So uh, let's kind of like um, go all the way back to when you were like kind of growing up and thinking about a career uh did you know you want to go into animation did you know you want to go into art um i definitely knew i wanted to go into art i feel like i had this moment in like first or second grade which i'm sure a lot of people have where like everyone's hanging up their little drawings on the wall and i was like oh mine's better than everyone else and that like <laughs> kind of like like awaken something in me and then I like I always loved like Disney movies and stuff so I feel like I I always knew I wanted to do something like with Disney or with animated movies um but I wasn't really sure like like exactly what like specifically and mm -hmm. I went to Ringling College of Art and Design for illustration and what drew me there was their they like one of the like big like things that Ringling kind of like sells to students or not sells, but like advertises is they get these studios like Pixar, Disney, Blue Sky to come and like do portfolio reviews. And they like all the art on the walls was very like, like cartoony and fun compared to other art schools I saw, which were more mm -hmm. like fine art or illustration based. And so I felt like Ringling uh, was a good, good fit in like this the kind of art I wanted to make and then let's see there was for Ringling there was like I took illustration not animation but there was one visual development class we could take and in that class there was like maybe like a two-week stint where we talked about storyboards so I had made like one storyboard in my whole life and <laughs> I don't know I just kind of like fell in love with doing visual development and I thought I would be like oh I want to be like a character designer like that would be fun and then I I don't know I was like I guess like visual development at like Disney but I didn't know that like oh those jobs are probably really hard to get um so I actually out of Ringling got a internship with Disney TV and yeah that's how I discovered what storyboarding was and um yeah, I think I think that's basically like your like origin story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that you were kind of like like that you um looked a little bit into what the different schools offered in terms of like um the content, the kind of content and that you were more attracted to Ringland because of like the cartoony side of it. Um yeah. I think it's interesting that you went into illustration rather than animation. Mm -hmm. Um and you you have actually illustrated a couple of books. Yeah, so um, there was a time period um, in my career where it, I believe it was um, after storyboarding on Pickle and Peanut, my first job. I kind of took some like took a break. Uh, I that was my first experience with like burnout. And during mm -hmm. this break was when I like illustrated like a little golden book and. That was like, it was a really, really cool experience. Um, so I'm really grateful to like have that like under my belt. Um, I do think like 
at Ringling, I would, it's crazy thinking back now because I would spend like 60 hours on one illustration and now storyboarding, it's like, oh, you spend 30 seconds on a drawing and you move on. And like, I definitely like my attention span is like, so like minimized now because I (laughs) I like try and do a drawing and I'm like, so I get so bored so easily or not bored, but I like just like, it's crazy how style changes over time. I feel like, yeah, this is so true. I feel like I kind of relate to that when in art school, I was like, I got to find my style. Cause everybody's like really obsessed with like finding a style that's original. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, when you go into storyboards, it's like, you're going to have to learn the style of every single show you're yeah, going to work exactly, on. <laughs> exactly. You have to be like a chameleon. Um, yeah. But I think like one of my favorite things about Ringling was like, in my my year in illustration, there were just so many talented people that I went to school with, and I think I learned I learned so much from them because they were all like finding their own styles, and they were all so talented. And I don't want to say it was like competition because I don't think that's a healthy thing to like, you know, put on mm-hmm. students. But like, mm-hmm. it did make me want to work harder to be at their level. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's like. That's a theme that I feel is very recurring in a lot of the episodes is that I do feel like it's very important to have a community, like an artistic community to be around to keep you motivated to improve. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't think like, I think, I don't think social media is a good way of keeping you motivated because you only see the final product. I think it's like, it's like what you were saying, it's good to have a community so you can see people's process along the way. Mm-hmm. Which is like, oh, not everything is like beautiful. It takes so much time to mm-hmm. make things beautiful and to like find your own style. Um, I think I think at the very core of like what I wanted to do, why I did illustration was I wanted to like be a storyteller. Mm-hmm. And like that was kind of like I didn't I didn't think I wanted to like animate things I just wanted to draw and that's why I picked illustration over animation um and I'm I'm really grateful I did uh I just I think it like the the curriculum at Ringling gave me a lot of time to like hone my craft and hone my style and and explore um Mm -hmm. I I do think nowadays people don't necessarily have have to go to an art school because there are so many good online resources like brainstorm and cda and like so i don't think people should feel pressured to attend art schools um yeah that's my little spiel on that yeah (laughs) because it is very expensive and i i do have quite a bit of debt from it so (laughs) i do think those communities can be found like elsewhere so Yeah. yeah if you can't go to art school it's not the end of the world I do agree. And for anyone who's like kind of curious about more resources on how to um, study outside of uh, art school, we have an episode from Steph Riso. That's really great. She went to community college. We have an episode from Kofi Fiagome, who uh, studied all by himself. So definitely check those out if uh, you're just kind of tuning in for the first time. Yeah. But I, I, I really um, I really agree with all that. I think it's like uh, there's it's just kind of daunting to um study by yourself I Mm -hmm. think Uh, yeah definitely and I think like with the pandemic and everyone being alone has made it like oh you know it's made everyone feel like exponentially more alone but yeah yeah so everyone has their own struggles and that's valid especially right now so just be patient with yourself yeah um was um so you said you worked on pickle and peanut but i think that it's not your very 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 first job in the industry what was the first gig that you landed uh after college um so let's see after college i i was extremely lucky to uh get the disney tv internship um i was actually selected like through the online application which seems like a very like you just throw your application into the void and you don't really expect anything. But, um, Mm -hmm. so I was selected through that and I did my internship on the TV show, the lion guard, which was a preschool show. Um, and I love the people I worked with. I think like it was, it was a wonderful experience. Um, and 
just like by proximity uh, across the hall was um, the production Sophia the First. And they were on their like third or fourth season and they needed a production assistant. And as my internship was ending, they like were looking for this. And because I was like across the hall, I was like, oh, I would mm -hmm. like like to interview for this position because at that time I was kind of I had no idea which which way in animation I wanted to go. I still think I still thought I wanted to do character design and like I was just like the the world still felt very like open ended. I was kind of like I don't know what I want to do, but I I think like at that time Disney still felt very like you know like when you get your first job, you're like, oh my gosh, I've been working so hard for this moment to be at this <laughs> company. And I was like, I'm not, I don't want to leave yet. I still want my silver pass. I want to go to Disneyland. <laughs> so, That's how they get you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I went to my internship summer. I went to Disneyland like 12 times because of that free pass. It was crazy. <laughs> Also, you get it for like two people, right? I yeah, remember, yeah, you can bring people. It's crazy. What a what a nice little perk. Um, but <laughs> um, so yeah, so I interviewed for that, and I uh, I was lucky enough to receive that job. So after my internship ended, I started as a production assistant um, on Sophia the First, and luckily they were they were a well oiled machine by then, and they had like really like capable production people already that could help me along which I was like mm -hmm. super grateful for so I learned a lot about like uh like note taking and like I sat in storyboard pitches I sat in like art handouts um it was mm -hmm. yeah it was just really nice like because like all the artists on that show were like very seasoned and mm -hmm. um they had like worked on like they were like older and they had worked on like old Disney films. I remember the layout person did like all the cathedrals and like Hunchback of Notre Dame. So like, and everyone wow. was just like so kind. I think I was just like, I was like, oh my gosh, everyone is so lovely. And <laughs> um, so I, I was just overwhelmed by everyone's like kindness and their acceptance of me and my like me like learning from everyone. Um, so, Do you feel like also working on a show like Sophia the First, where um, because it's like preschool and there's a little bit, bit like less internet discourse over it, it's uh, like kind of creating a more chill atmosphere? I'm just kind of like that's asking a random question. Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a good point. I think at this this time in my like career, I like wasn't super up to date with like internet discourse. I think at the time shows like Star. And like Gravity Falls were happening. There she is. Mm. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wasn't like aware that people were so mean on the internet back then. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really like pay much attention to it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's a good point though. I Sophie the First had like, because it's like, you know, a preschool show about princesses, like, of course, like. I don't, people like loved it and they were like big fans of it. So I actually didn't experience mm -hmm. like, you know, people saying mean things, but that's a really good question. <laughs> yeah. I was asking that also because I feel like sometimes there's some shows where it's like, you know, when you get a lot of um, scrutiny, I guess on the internet, people start getting like more like, yeah. uh, like uh, what's the word? Um, you're kind of like trying harder. You want to make the best product. You're kind of trying to prove yourself as you're trying to prove that the show is good. Yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, I think because this show was already super successful for Disney, it was in a really yeah. like... That's what it is. Yeah. I think like this was yeah. at the time one of Disney's big, like Disney TV's big money makers. So like, like I think they had room to like, you know, yeah. do more stuff. Um, yeah that's true but like yeah yeah that's great and so what were like what would you say a couple points of whether the the most important like not lessons but like three most important points you've learned as like working in the, as a production person on the show 
Um, I think I learned how important communication is. And that's, mm. I think that's an evergreen, like, like lesson to learn for anybody in animation. Like, it's like, just be like, if you think you're not going to finish something by end of day, just like let people know, like, if I expect something from a certain time, like, I'll let you know, because it's, it's a team sport at the end of the day, and everyone has to just work together. And mm. um, just, it doesn't help when nobody talks to each other. So but like everyone on Sophia was already like, you know, highly communicative, they had like their schedules all like worked out. Um, and I think I I just learned that like being a nice person like can actually like get you pretty far because I'll not like try to be nice but just be yourself like <laughs> don't just like try and be like nice to manipulate people but it was nice to see that like so many of like these people with such high accolades were also nice people I think yeah I agree like humility is always like really refreshing to see <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and like no nobody was like an asshole nobody was like mm, yeah I worked on like xyz disney movies so and you just you're new here so leave me alone like it wasn't like that at all it was so nice so yeah <laughs> and so you and so the next thing that you did after sophia was pico and peanut yeah so i um through word of mouth again like um i was talking to the recruiter at disney at the time and i like she knew that i wanted to go into art because like I was I was an artist and I realized like kind of how much I miss doing art um, mm. when I was doing production. I was like, OK, like I, I really enjoy working in animation, but I do miss like just doing like the art side of it. I, like I I would just always be like doodling on my notes and stuff. So, yeah, my the the recruiter like hit me up and was like, hey, like Pickle and Peanut season two is staffing up for storyboard artists. And I was like, oh, I could, I could try that. I, I did a storyboard one time in college. Why can't <laughs> 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 like, I think it's like, yeah, just, just believe in yourself. And like, if you want to give something a go, just do it. Even like, you never know what's going to happen. And like, luckily at the time I was like I have been given like a month to complete the test, which is very not not usually the case because usually people want tests back in like a week or so. So That's I had true. Yeah. I had like time to think about my test and looking back now it's pro it's probably not very good, but I was able to like make them laugh. So I was able to make them laugh and show that like I could board something that had heart or like mm -hmm. I could tell a story that had a little bit of heart. So I think as long as people can see the potential in your work, that's all that matters. Um, yeah. But, and they, and I ended up getting the job and leaving production. Um, and this, this job that I took, it was like, I think it was only for one board. So it was like, Oh, come on for six weeks and we'll see how you do. And who knows what will happen after that. So I was really taking a big risk leaving this like full time yeah. job at Sophia the first that was going to go for like at least a year or two more because, you know, it was it was a solid job. And I mm -hmm. I did. I left it and I ended up like, you know, I did one board and they were like, OK, OK, pretty good. And then I did like another board and they were like, then they gave me another board and I was I did good on that one and then they brought me on full time so it was like very risky at the time but I think that's yeah. crazy because I remember I remember Pico and Peanut being a really hard show but it had like a high turnover because they yeah. had such a very specific um they were looking for such a specific style of storytelling so yeah definitely but I'll say yes it, it was super specific um and I just like, I just tried my hardest and I don't like nowadays, obviously I don't recommend this to people, but because this was my first story job, I was so nervous and wanting to do a good job. I also boarded so slow at a snail's pace, like pickle and peanut, like the characters, if you think about it are like, 
probably the easiest characters I'll ever get to draw an animation again. But, <laughs> yeah, they're like little potatoes. <laughs> but they, it took me so long to board these characters. So I would work until like eight or nine every night. And like, mm. I really like push myself. Yeah, I feel like uh, this is something that I was talking about with a couple of friends. Unfortunately, I believe because the standards of the industry are at a point right now mm-hmm. that it is probably really hard to uh, start on a storyboard job and I hate that I'm going to say this, but, and put in like, oh, like, like a lot of hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, there is a little bit of a gap to bridge between uh, the pace a student Mm -hmm. draws at compared to the pace you're supposed to draw at as a professional support artist absolutely and and I don't know what the right answer I mean that's why we're we're involved in the union and we're (laughs) trying to make things change but like unfortunately like it's a very common story and it's my story as well like when you the first my first couple of years as a professional storyboard artist it's just so much work Mm -hmm. it's very testing I don't know if you felt that way but I remember thinking six months in I was like I don't know if I can do this until like I'm 30 oh (laughs) absolutely yeah yeah definitely like and I like was like it's I can do this because one at the time I loved it I love that I got to make these silly drawings and tell jokes and like I, I was like, I have never story, storyboarded before. This is fine that I'm, like, doing all this work because I just want to prove myself. Like, I just want to, like, keep doing this cool job of just making cartoons every day. Um, but, yeah, that's – I. it's hard because you don't want to endorse doing overtime, yeah. like, yeah. unpaid overtime. But I do think, like, yeah, going on new shows, there's, like, a learning curve of the style and, like yeah. – and – like sometimes you have to do things twice and yeah. it's not good, but like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a very hard, a very, it's re- <laughs> it, yeah, it's really hard to talk about. Um, I don't have the right answer because back in the day they had mentorships and you could actually have the time to learn on the job. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do feel like ideally maybe, maybe you want to start on shows that are like less, high prestige like shows that are like very big online maybe like something that's like a little more low profile I don't know Mm. I don't have an answer to that either but it is what I was gonna get at though is like it's really scary the first couple of years because you're like can I ever can I keep doing this is this this gonna be sustainable but then eventually you're learning you're fine yeah it is and it's manageable (laughs) it is like it is crazy because like now I look back and I'm like, oh, I could have done those pickle and point up boards in like a day. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, which is also really satisfying because it's like, oh, it's nice to like see how far you come. It's like, oh, that's actually really nice. Like, like busting my ass, like it was worth it in a way. Like it sucked, but it was like worth it. Um, yeah. But back mm-hmm. to your question about like online hate, I forgot that pickle and peanut had like <laughs> a, shit, yeah. <laughs> a shit ton of online hate it was like and like I didn't care at the time because I was like this is just a silly show and like nobody on the show was bothered by it they thought it was funny and like yeah I was like whatever it's fine and like um yeah people were like oh this is the sh- this is the reason wander over yonder got canceled like, ah, no people would say that and it's like I think that was, like, my first experience with, like, online people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> like, yeah, um, it was crazy, I think. I think it was also just kind of, like, a weird time at Disney. I remember uh, talking to, uh, it was probably Marley. Marley, who, by the way, you should listen to this episode. Yes, just Marley, came out a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Marley is a very cool person. Listen to their podcast their episode. yeah <laughs> yeah it's really awesome and um like it was at a time like at disney where like they were trying to figure out what to do with disney xd and it was just like let's just 
try stuff and they did the weirdest kind of shows that are so not Disney. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> Pico Fino doesn't look like a Disney show. It looks more like a Cartoon Network show. Um, this but is I think my we- plug to watch Pico and Peanut because it is very funny and everybody working on it was hilarious and talented. And yeah. it didn't cancel Wander Over Yonder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's it's really funny. Like it's it's just like real it's really goofy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it- like Pickle and Peanut, I'm grateful for because it's like how I met Victor and like yeah. Victor is how I got on Thundercats Roar. And it just shows you that like people want to help you out. If you're like kind and hardworking, they want to see you succeed. And yeah, it's just, it's nice. <laughs> after, I was wondering, after Pico and Peanut, what was, uh, what did you do? Because I know you did a little um, detour by Cartoon Network. Um, so after Pico and Peanut, I was obviously incredibly burned out. And that's when I took like, uh, like a break, kind of. I was like, because I did have that moment where I was just like, wow, why can't I feel like I think like, I was like, I can't think of anything good. Like, I literally feel like my brain is mush. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that was extreme burnout. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when I, like, did my little golden book illustration. And I worked on the has-been pilot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after I did that, that's when I did revisions on the Powerpuff Girls reboot. Mm. Um but did you specifically look for revisionist jobs or did you, or was it just kind of like something that was there? And um, um, you- I think at the time I was still kind of like, I think I was kind of looking for anything that was there and revision seemed like a good thing because I was still, I still felt like I was pretty burnt out and I didn't know if like I was cut out for storyboarding I was like Mm. man I feel like I still like I don't know if I'm like you know yeah good enough you know and like because I I didn't have any formal training so I was like am I just like was that it am I done with storyboarding like so I think like getting to do revisions for a little bit was really nice because like it was still in the studio setting and still meeting really cool people um another show that got a lot of unnecessary online hate because it was a reboot <laughs> but like oh my gosh yeah but I loved getting to watch like the pitches and everyone was really kind and funny and like it's just nice to be in that environment I think I think revisions is like a great like job <laughs> yeah and that's also where uh Caitlin Van Arsdale was yeah. on that show yeah. she, we interviewed her a couple of like weeks ago so y'all check her episode out after after you finish listening to Megan's episode <laughs> yeah so I met people like um like Caitlin and I met Jay um who uh created Boons and Curses and like just like tons of cool people like animation is full of so many nice people if you meet a mean person it's like pretty rare um I actually agree I feel like I feel like when you look at twitter or like online discourse it looks like it's all doom and gloom and everyone's horrible and it's mm-hmm. a terrible industry that's so toxic and mean and i'm like come on no, <laughs> it's, it's not that way it's not everyone is so nice everyone like for the most part like wants to help you like everyone mm. just wants to like work together and make cool stuff like it's it's i don't know i think it's like it's a I think it's a great job like there are obviously it's very hard and like we fight for better wages and stuff but like I I love it so (laughs) yeah I agree no I think we don't say I mean I feel like it's easy to think about all the negatives but it's like also depends on the studios and the productions obviously and if you are on a production that's just not great you know Mm -hmm. you can always quit yeah you can always quit and save yourself (laughs) yeah there's I think from time to like I don't think I've ever been on like a a toxic production, but they do exist. And if you think you're being taken advantage of, you're probably right. So (laughs) yeah, that's true. Um, But yeah, then then you quit. (laughs) How long did you do revisions for on on the Powerpuff reboot? Um, I was on the Powerpuff reboot for about six months until I think they did not get a green light for a new season. So Mm. I 
took some storyboard tests. I took one for like, um, like Owl House, and then I took Thundercats Four, which you also took that. Feel test. Like, yeah, I feel like I took all the tests. Yeah, I took the test for Owl House as well. I realized after the fact. I think I made it to not anime but i thought that disney had like so much money that i could do whatever i wanted <laughs> and then apparently i was wrong yeah I, like i just do too many crazy angles and stuff. i think this is also like a side note about testing but like i also like i tested for shows like amphibia and like just because you don't like get like the job after you test it doesn't mean you failed you're not a failure if you fail a test it could mean so many different things like yeah. it could mean like they already had someone in mind most people want to hire their friends and yes. or like they were looking for something specific or a style of drawing like it just means that like your style of show will come along like somewhat like if you didn't get it it's probably for the best like it probably just means that you i don't know you might have be have might have a bad time on it like, because they're like, I don't know. <laughs> no, I agree because I feel like it's also kind of like something with the industry where things come in waves. And mm -hmm. for example, recently we had a big like serialized action wave. Mm -hmm. And if your style of boards, if your portfolio is mostly comedy or uh, then it's going to be a little bit of a dry spell because if there's not that many comedy shows and you're a comedy board artist, then, you know, uh, but then like it always kind of changes and uh for example right now i'm noticing in the industry that like kind of action heavy serialized uh wave is kind of like receding and we're seeing a little bit more of a comedy comeback so like for all these artists that that you know have a specific style like now they can like be in the spotlight again so because they're because that's really true you know like sometimes when they're testing you they're just kind of trying to see what you're your tone is like yeah. are you more you know uh do you do you board more like an edgar wright type of like editing or do you board more like i don't know like a like a soft drama or mm -hmm. you know it's very different style of storyboarding yeah exactly and like so if you like yeah people people pass tests for so many different reasons like you're not a failure if you didn't get it like and it's also like sometimes testing is just like a good experience like i learned a lot from doing like my owl house and my amphibia tests and like i had fun doing them it's not like i didn't learn anything i look back at them now and i'm like that's pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh okay um but yeah so then yeah then i got the thundercats gig and I was on that for like a long time and that was like yeah that was a very formative show because victor and yeah. like marley they were so open to letting us use our voice and i yes. think those shows are really special when like yeah you you can put yourself in it and um i think that team was just like we we're all so like funny and like we all bounced off each other we like mm. because we were in that tiny room it was like <laughs> there were days like someone would come in like and has a bad day and like you know if like you cry in front of people it like mm -hmm. I feel like it just like is so it forms like a strong bond because you're like you're seeing people like like at every state that they're in so yeah. <laughs> it did really feel like college for me it reminded me a lot of like the atmosphere in in college but like the positive experience of college you know when you're like all in the room and everyone's mm -hmm. working hard but you know everyone's cracking jokes and i don't know it's like yeah. very kind of like camaraderie i felt like being on the thousand sunny for all the <laughs> these fans out there that's kind of how it felt you know <laughs> yeah and everyone was so like you're just like, oh, I don't know how to board this action bit. We would like help each other or like, what's the funniest joke I can put in here? And we would help each other. And that like creates yeah. such a good environment for learning, which yeah. is like, basically like, that's all I've done is learn on the job. And I think that's what like probably everybody does is like learning on the job is like, you never stop learning. Like yeah. you're, you're always like learning, you're learning how to stage different things. You're learning how to make things like, like hit more emotionally like yeah so i think that was like i it was like 
the schedule for that was extremely difficult, but it's hard to say, be, like, I would not trade it for anything in the world because I learned, like, it was such a formative, like, show. And yeah. because it, it was so difficult, like, you just, you had to learn and you had to, like, just do it and, like, just do it by learning. And yeah, I don't know. So <laughs> No, I agree. I think for me, like, and what you said is also, like, we had a lot of room to put our voice in the show. And mm -hmm. I, I, that's something that I really cherish because it's like, you don't get that chance a lot you don't mm -hmm. really often get that chance a lot and like you, you could do so you could really try some stuff which mm -hmm. was really fun you could really i don't know it was such a fun show to work on it was so great mm -hmm. uh it was really hard it was really really hard but it, it was it was really fun yeah still probably the experience i like the most yeah out of my career you could really just like i like i don't know you could just put in whatever weird joke you wanted as long as it made everyone laugh they would be like let's keep it like i remember like i had mumra sleep on a bunch of like newspaper on the floor like, <laughs> like no wonder the original thundercats fans hated it because we were just like we had so much fun um but mm -hmm. i do think like i don't know we we did get a lot of like hate but we also we all had each other so it didn't really matter because we were just making this thing that we liked like, yeah i think also i don't know to be honest okay this is the first time we're kind of like talking publicly about this i guess but, like, yeah. <laughs> i don't know like getting all the hate on thundercats was also kind of funny i mean for me no i mean some of it was not funny because some of it was like digs at specific people and that's yeah. just kind of i don't know at that point it's just really mean yeah. and um and and there's like an area when things start to go in a certain very dark area mm -hmm. like legal has to get involved and yeah. and that's and that's just like no just i don't know just really yeah. bad we, but all yeah. the other like all the hate that was just kind of like what did they do to my childhood? That was just <laughs> funny. That was just really funny. It was like... funny because like when we were familiar, familiarizing ourselves with the content of the original Thundercats, like yeah, we were I watching it every day. We were watching watch... it on like two or three times speed because yeah, yeah like yeah. the episodes, they were just so slow and like, that's yeah. okay because that was the style back then, but like it would not hold up now. And like, like, people like cartoons are so fast nowadays it's like bam 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 joke 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 i don't know yeah um, but i do feel like i do feel like thundercats roar now that i'm watching it again i'm like it was a little too fast <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah like, we were, i think it's because we were watching the show the original show on like time like a speed like 2.5 so then we were just like <laughs> hyper yeah yeah we we're like we we're wired yeah yeah we were <laughs> the original show is like honestly though i do like that original show i it think it like was a... really goofy and really fun yeah exactly exactly like the episode it's... like like tiger's garden that episode that we ended that was... up remaking it's like that's such a fun concept like tiger falls in love with a flower that's great that's so good <laughs> it's so funny and sometimes they were like really mean to each other i remember the end of an episode where they started throwing dishes at one of the thunder because <laughs> they're so mad like i think they like dis they disguise themselves as like penguins or something oh or like God. sharks that's it so was good it's so funny yeah we, we but, did um, everything with like like knowing like we didn't like we weren't purposely trying to like bastardize people's loved characters we were just having yeah. fun like well also the thing i said a lot is like there was a lot of thundercats uh thundercats comics and those are very serious and gritty oh, and yeah. and i think well, that's my personal take i think that people uh who really uh latched on to thundercats as kids continued uh living in the franchise through the comics mm -hmm. and then kept that uh that view on what the brand was which because if you google it you see like a lot of like you know lion knows like is basically like a bodybuilder mm -hmm. um chitara is basically like um let's say 
a, a beautiful actress, <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, and you're like, all right. Uh, and that's like, that's a very different vibe from the original show, but I could see, I could see like the, the lineage of the property in that sense mm-hmm. and the expectations based on the comics. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were just trying to stay stay close to the original. Property. I think like also Thundercats having songs every episode really like like doing musical sequences. Like it also gave us the opportunity to learn how to do those, and I feel like that's yeah that's such a useful skill now because a lot of shows do have like musical moments. That's very true. Um. So yeah. Oh, that, yeah. that was really good. After so after Thundercats, what did you go on to? So after Thundercats, I I remember I took kind of like a little another break because Thundercats was so demanding, and I did pilots for Netflix and Disney TV, um, at the same time, which I don't recommend because it's, <laughs> doing pilots is very hard, and I think it like. So for a while, I can talk about this, but like for a while, when I was first starting in the industry, I would take freelance anytime somebody asked me to do something. And like, I think that also like added to my burnout because I was just like, oh my God, people, people want me to do stuff. That's so cool. They're like, and I didn't care what the project was. I would just do it. And it like, I think it like really like it created like this like build up of long term burnout for me and like yeah. it's it's okay to say no is what i'm saying like if you if you get offered to work on a project that you're like oh, okay this is this is something i could be interested in i think it's important to like take time to think like do i have time how demanding is this like yeah should i should i do this do i really want to do this i think like I think real life experiences are more useful. I guess yes. like obviously if you need the money then like please like please do it. But I think like something early in my career I wish I like learned was to like take breaks, use the weekends to hang out with friends, like go on hikes, go do go explore, go do stuff like and the same with college like I Like, in college, I was in the labs, like, all the time. I didn't, like, like, I didn't have a lot of, like, free time or, like, spend free time on myself. I was just always working. And, like, I'm grateful for it because I feel like it's the reason uh, where I, like, am where I am today. But, like, Mm -hmm. I think, like, I just wish I was, like, easier on myself and, like, just knew that it was okay to say no once in a while so I could, like, spend time with friends or go see a movie or like yeah Yeah. so it's I really agree with that I do feel like it's something I I relate to that a lot because I feel like uh like you said it's this thing where it's like well maybe if I don't if I say no like I'm never gonna get the opportunity again and yeah and it's like this kind of FOMO of work and like you're worried that like you're a worthless board artist and (laughs) they're giving you the like yeah (laughs) <laughs> but um but you're right like I feel like for the longest time I I like didn't really have a strong comedy bone like I wanted to do comedy but I was just like why am I not as funny as all the other <laughs> people and it's like it's like you know like just live life yeah <laughs> you'll you'll find your your yourself your sense of comedy because when you're working all the time your sense of self doesn't have time to grow yeah exactly yeah and you're just like wow and I feel like it hinders you because all you're doing is working yeah. and you're not consuming any like experiences which is like also important for boarding because you're like oh I had this weird experience like I can add that you know basically mm-hmm. like to my style of boarding I don't know I think there will always be more freelance opportunities there will always like you're not gonna like fade out of like existence if you say no to a freelance opportunity and i'm just saying this because i wish i knew it back then yeah (laughs) like my sense of self-worth was so heavily reliant on people asking me for freelance and getting that gratification of people liking my the work that i did for them Mm -hmm. um but it's important to like find your own self-worth and um 
Yeah, because you'll be way better off for it. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, after, so you did a little bit of these pilots. Um, I know you worked on The Ghost and Molly McGee. How was that? Were you a board oh, artist? It was good. Um, but before that, I was, I, I did revisions on Adventure Time, Distant Land. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And that was it was good. I think, like, I was also, like, happy it was revisions because, like, there's no shame in, like, going from board artist to revisionist because, like, boarding is very hard and, like, revisions helps you, like, you know, kind of get back that juice because mm -hmm. you're still in it. You're around the boards happening and, like, but it was really cool. Like, it, like, this is kind of dumb, but it being in the boardroom, like, felt like, I don't know, like being a part of like history because that property is so well loved and so important. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like I was like, like everyone was so open. They'd be like, oh, does anyone have any suggestions or feedback? And I'm like, I don't know if I'm qualified for this, but like, I don't know. I just, it was a really, really cool experience, like getting to do revisions. I did revisions on the BMO mm -hmm. one and the Bubbling one. And, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> um, uh, that's yeah. really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, the bubbling one was definitely uh, a big, a big one. Yeah. So I had, I had a good time. It was, it was really cool. I was very grateful that Adam reached out, um, and I also met more cool people on that project. So it's, I don't know. It's, not, and then I also on that show was someone I had gone to college with. So like it, everything comes full circle. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It really does. Um, but I did leave that show a little bit early because I, I believe the last one was the, the Finn and Jake special. And I left mm. before that one to go board on ghost and Molly McGee, which was like another super formative like show because I also think I wouldn't have gotten to go on that show if I didn't go on Thundercats because mm. people, even though the internet hated Thundercats, everyone in animation, like, <laughs> is very appreciative yeah. of it because they can see how hard the board yeah. artists worked and stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and they also, because there were, like, musical sequences in that show, um, that also, like, came in handy. Um, but unfortunately, that's also when the pandemic happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the pandemic happened, like I started in like October, November, and the pandemic happened about, I think like, what was it, March? So mm -hmm. we were only in office for about five months. And then we all got sent home. And it was like, really, really sad working in the pandemic. But like, it was nice getting to work on it is, it'll never, like, it'll never be weird, like, working on cartoons and, like, you're like, is this funny? Like, also with all the horrible world events happening, you're like, yeah. wow, all my rights were just taken away. Let me make this funny joke. Yeah. <laughs> like, <it's> <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> um, that, is a, that is a crazy thing. I feel like, I think it's something that we don't really talk about a lot, but, like, when you're a board artist and you have to crack jokes all the time, Oh my god, it's really tough sometimes to come up with something funny when everything is on fire. You're like, all right, well. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember the first episode. I think I did working from home. Might have been the like feel good Christmas episode, and I was like, I've never been in less of a mood to like do a. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, but like I learned so much from that show because it was like six weeks. Uh, the scripts were super solid. I'm like, I feel like it's really nice to be on a show where the scripts are like, so well thought out because mm -hmm. this is rare now where like studios have like a head writer, like, mm -hmm. and then they have a full team of like writers with a writer's yeah. room. And like that, I think that makes the show so much better when like studios do that. And like, obviously yes. it's very expensive, so they don't, but like, I think that's one of the reasons why the show is so good is because like, they would literally sit down together in a room and think of ways to make this show good. Like, I don't know. It makes it so I much agree. more cohesive. That was the thing. That was the thing um, 
that's I think that's the reason why on Bad House the the episodes are really solid because they have a right an in-house writer's room Mm -hmm. um and I and I think the reason why they do is because Chris Savino worked for a really long time at Disney and Mm -hmm. I think he imported the model from Disney to Nickelodeon yeah I think it's a super solid like because it works out for everyone I'm not saying board driven is not a good way of doing things but I think like it makes it easier on the board artists and makes it easier like for everyone kind of down the line if you just have this solid story structure yeah agreed I agree I feel like it, it's just just so much on the board artists or like I feel like board driven just needs more time you just need to give people more time yeah and mm-hmm. Molly was also one of those shows where it was encouraged to kind of put your own little like because it that show is big on quirkiness and like the quirkiness the individual quirkiness of Molly and the individual quirkiness of Scratch and how they kind of go together. So it was very like everyone kind of put their own spin on it and they put their own like their little juice on it. So but it was it was again very specific and they hired people that could do that specific thing that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. But that specific thing that they were looking for just so happened to be like what certain people were good at and like doing so. Yeah. yeah it again just like very like <laughs> shows are so specific they really are um i was gonna ask you about now you're directing on tiny tunes yeah how, how is uh how has directing been for you what are some things that you've learned uh while directing how is it different from storyboarding i actually think like a lot of my a lot of things i learned doing production are kind of coming back to directing like again like making meetings like writing down notes like keeping track of like a bunch of different things and like so I think that managerial brain in my like in you know is like coming coming back to help out because like it's good to be organized and you have to be very communicative with your team and yeah um I think Let's see. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what what was the question again? <laughs> no, it was just kind of like things that you've learned or like um, how's it different from storyboarding and kind of like what's your style of directing? Just kind of mm. like what are some because um, I think here's the thing. I think a lot of people don't really know what directing means. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's and here we're talking about episode directing, which yeah. is um, you're you're the one who's in charge of a little team. It can be between it can be as as few as one board mm-hmm. artist up to probably four, I guess. Mm-hmm. I think luckily on Tiny Tunes, like I do get to board a little bit, which like is nice because I don't want to lose this skill. I feel like that feeling never goes away where you're like, oh, if I don't do it, I'm going to never remember to do it again which isn't really the case but like you know anxious brain um so I get to board a little bit which is nice um it it is it's quite managerial but there's a lot of communication required whereas like being a board artist especially on like shows like Molly where it's just you it was kind of like I could just do my thing for like however long three weeks and then just like hand it in. I didn't really have to talk yeah. to anyone. I didn't like have to interact. But like with with directing, it's like you have to like it's it's good to I think what what I try to do the most is hype up my team. I think that's like the most important thing is like making sure they know that they're doing a good job, especially work from home, because mm-hmm. like people can be in their own little bubbles and you're like, I don't know if any of this is good. Like, is this garbage? Like, I think just like knowing, letting your team know that they are appreciated and they're, they're, what they're doing is not easy. And like just encouraging them because everybody needs that. (laughs) I agree. Um, So I try to be as like encouraging as possible. Um, I am very like, my style of directing is I'm, I'm very open to, like whatever my team needs if my team needs me to like oh I'm not really sure how to do this section then I'll do thumbs or I'll like take it off their hands for them um I do think like 
I am still learning how to be a director. And I feel like mm. with every new position you jump into, there is a learning curve. And it's good to remember that. Like, you're not going to immediately do something and be perfect at it. Mm. So I think, like, it also depends on, like, the person on your team. Like, if one person needs, like, more help, you just have to learn how to distribute your time. So, like, you can do your work, but also help them out. Um, yeah, like, you, you just have to be there for them. And I think it's... It's a really rewarding job to see, like, especially if your board artists are, like, learning and they're, like, mm -hmm. improving. You're just like, wow, this is, like, really cool to see. Like, yeah. seeing someone's growth is, like, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so I, like, I'm, like, learning how to do, like, like, timing passes is also really cool because that's, like, a huge part of animation now is, like, making animatics like like e executives want to see like like fully fleshed out animatics whereas mm -hmm. like i'm sure in the past that wasn't always the case so like learning how to like make things funny like not just scrolling through like when mm -hmm. you're, you're a board artist you just pitch and you scroll through your board but like there's a whole other level to it in animatic stage which i'm learning and it's like it's really cool to see um yeah. yeah yeah that's really great I love that I love that answer um you know what let's uh go into some questions oh okay yeah yeah yeah. now that we've kind of we've kind of hovered over your whole career <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is crazy yeah it's, yeah it's been about like six or seven years I think since I've started in tv animation which is like crazy to think it's been that long. And I I honestly was like, I would like to direct, but I didn't think it would come this soon. And mm -hmm. I feel like I'm I'm super grateful for this opportunity. And like it's I think it's learning to direct has also helped my boarding because I'm also like I'm like I said, constantly learning. I'm learning from my board artists. It's it's and you also when you're directing you can kind of when you're like redlining people's stuff you see how far your personal growth has come because yes. you're like wow like i'm i can actually see these things they're not bad but i can see how to improve them and that's yes. such a special feeling you're just like wow i'm actually like i'm doing it <laughs> yeah it's like i know i actually know what i'm doing yeah oh my gosh. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. I think that's like a really cool feeling. And like, also like the people on Tiny Toons were like also the, like I met them on Thundercats. So it's like people you meet and make a good impression on, they want to work with you again. And it's, it that makes- is very makes, true. <laughs> makes for a good, it makes for a good working environment because everyone is very appreciative. And like, yeah, that's just my one advice is like, always like if you're in like a position of like leadership just like constantly tell people they're like you're grateful and they're doing a good job and like because i feel like artists most of the time are very like we're all very sensitive and we're all especially if we're doing work for other people like someone else's yeah. vision we want to make sure that we're doing it correctly mm -hmm. yeah so i agree i agree uh something that i i i you, I do as well because it's like you do want to make sure that they're like that they know that they're they're you appreciate the work because here's the thing I don't know I don't think you, you should take the work for granted no um, definitely not like it's yeah. hard work like storyboarding is extremely hard work and it's very like demanding and like mentally draining and um the people that do it are like they're extremely talented it takes like I'm not discounting other like, like, you know, facets of it because like, obviously I didn't go into character design for a reason. Like I, <laughs> I cannot do it. So it, it's another different skill on its own, but like, mm -hmm. like storyboarding is, is crazy. It's, it's crazy guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, storyboarding is so hard to talk about because this is just like so many, um, it's, it's so many plates you have to spin at the same time mm -hmm. and 
be really fast. But um, I wanted to ask, so we got some questions from our patrons. Mm -hmm. um, so for our patrons, uh, we have a Discord where uh, you can ask uh, prompts and questions early. Mm -hmm. uh, so from Bialins Bear, you've had an, amer an amazing career so far, but is that anything in particular you still pinched yourself you got to be a part of creating so what's kind of like the job that was like you can't believe that you worked on <laughs> um i do think it's probably adventure time i think like it's it's cool because like sometimes you tell people like outside of animation oh i worked on this and they're like oh what is that but like mm -hmm. everybody knows what adventure time is so that's like a very like It was very humbling to be a part of. <laughs> I also think like I'm, this isn't animation related, but like doing a little golden book was like, like pretty crazy. So <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's also one of the things where like, I'll go home for Christmas and be like, Oh, Megan, are you going to do any more children's books? And I'm like, I'm making TV. Don't you care about that? Like, isn't that <laughs> cool? Isn't that cool that I'm doing that? And they're like, hmm but the book like and i'm just like oh <laughs> i do feel like doing a book is like it kind of puts you in the spotlight a little bit more than animation yeah, i kind of i kind of right. see why like people think that way that's the reason why i hope one day to publish a comic and then yeah you can be do mine. it um everybody <laughs> you probably already know this but b is an amazing comic artist <laughs> ah, stop <laughs> Um, still like the second part of uh, Bjelen Bear's question. Do you have a favorite animal you like to draw? Oh, um, I like fish a lot. Like, I also like drawing mermaids a lot. So I think drawing, I like drawing like, like sea creatures are very fun because they're very fluid and like, you know, mm. wiggly. I like them. <laughs> you do you like the fish? You do like the fish people? <laughs> Uh, from at Magic Bunny Art on Twitter, <gasps> who was a guest of the show, <laughs> Megan Boy, check out her episode. What's your favorite kind of thing to storyboard? Oh, um, that's a good question. I think yeah. I love any opportunity to make people laugh and like add a dumb little joke. Um, I love like one of the I don't think I said this, but like one of the reasons I like one of the big things that kind of made me love TV animation was like growing up with SpongeBob and like adding dumb little jokes like on like the original SpongeBob. Like anytime I get to do something like that and like crack people up, it's so rewarding. It's like, I don't know, it like feeds my soul. I also like getting to do like really emotional moments because I don't think they happen a lot in mm -hmm. like TV animation because it's mostly very lighthearted. But mm -hmm. it's nice when you get to do like really like like two characters are having like a very sweet tender moment or like I don't think I've ever gotten to board like a character crying but like I would like to do that <laughs> oh yeah that's tough I think I would be I would be really worried because I would be like Ooh, is, you know like yeah. you could, what if they like watch your character cry and then they laugh and then you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> that's so scary now you can live with that no yeah no i have to Here. live with that it's okay yeah. i feel like i tried to in like an early pitch for a thundercats episode i think it was like claudus where mm -hmm. lino meets his dad i like had lino cry and they were like take that out and i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> no tears on the show yeah. um only um what was his name joe in my episode oh, safari, safari joe, joe yes oh, that was my favorite thing to board where he cries so much it's like a little puddle <laughs> and he's like rolling around in it i love that oh. um from at malkman is here uh how many cartoons can you think of that effectively portray love Ooh, i think that's a really sweet one that is a really sweet one um love like i think like what i can think of is like gravity falls does a good job of like sibling love i think that their relationship is really sweet um i think like 
I don't know. Like now I'm like, that's a really good question. Um, love. Do you, do you, can you think of anything V? Actually, you know what? I ha I'm like cheating a little bit because it's actually from a thread and I'm like looking at oh, all the different things okay. in the thread. But let me try to think of something that's not in the thread. Uh -huh. mm. um, love. Portray love. I think. Well, I guess you could bring up uh, up in the beginning. There's oh, like yeah, absolutely. I was thinking of like cartoon, like TV cartoons. TV, TV yeah. cartoon. Um, I feel like a lot of anime does it really nice. <laughs> anime like um I don't know I do like uh I think in the in like the more sitcom-esque cartoons there because I do agree Gravity Falls has this really neat nice like relationship between uh the two twins mm -hmm. I feel like there are some really sweet moments in the loud house like with oh, the uh yeah. Clyde's parents mm -hmm. uh I I, I really like that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not uh, I'm trying to think. Of, well, um, I think in Bojack, there's some really good moments. I oh, really, yeah. really like in the last season. I don't know if that's a spoiler, but I one of the things that made me the happiest in Bojack was the story for Princess Car uh, Caroline. Yeah, definitely. I mean, now that like I'm thinking of like adult cartoons, like Tuca and Birdie, like Best Friend yes. Love, that one's mm -hmm. really good. Um, yeah, mm. I think, I I guess like love can be kind of like anything, you know, where it's like, like sibling love or like, you know, best friend love. Um, yeah I it mean, depends it, yeah it depends what kind of love you're looking for because it's like because there's like infatuation and is that love mm -hmm. or like is is there like like a married love when you've been together with someone for a very long time and it's like a different kind of love mm -hmm. or like yeah like siblings or like friendship um mm -hmm. um i just watched this anime <laughs> called my dress up darling and like i think it's it's pretty etchy but i think it's like I don't know how it does it, but it's like etchy, but also wholesome. And I think oh. there is some like really sweet, like tender moments in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Love is a really interesting topic to talk about. I feel mm -hmm. like, I feel like for kids TV though, I feel like in my, for kids TV, you're probably going to see the relationship more with the adults because mm kids like like if the cartoon is for like kids from like six to ten you're you're not really thinking about romantic love at this age you're so young mm -hmm. you're like you know you don't really have any hormones at that age you're just that you're still trying to figure out what the world is you're still trying to figure out yeah like, definitely like you know how school even works you know <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I feel like at that time it's not really on the radar um, yeah, of a child so I feel like it's more like the, the kids relationship is going to be a little bit more uh like like adventure friendship mm -hmm. and and all the like I don't know this is my take on yeah. it yeah this is a plug but Molly McGee has some good like familial family love moments um yeah. this is my plug to go watch <laughs> the show <laughs> but to be honest like actually i really do like the relationship between finn and jake yeah i think there's something that's almost kind of like an an uncle and mm -hmm. and like the nephew you know where it's like kind of like it's not exactly like your parents it's gonna be like eh, 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 but it's mm -hmm. kind of like let's do some crazy stuff together but i'm still watching over you kind of thing yeah it's that's like so the cute. ability to be like open with someone and be like accepted about it mm -hmm. yeah um, I was going to ask you about creative block. Uh, do you experience it? How does it feel like for you? How do you get over it? Oh, um, yes, I definitely experience it. I think like, I think with social media, it's hard because everyone is always outputting amazing work and you're like, wow, I wish I could like, you know, just crank stuff out. But like, I mean, like even right now, I would say I'm going through kind of a creative block. But something that I'm doing about it is just kind of like indulging in things that like, I had always like, considered guilty pleasures. But mm -hmm. now that I'm like older, I'm like, I can just like what I like, it's fine. Like, 
going back and reading like 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 manga I grew up with like really cheesy like shujo stuff that's like just very like self indulgent I guess and like even like just reading kind of like like webtoons like stories that are like adjacent to what I want to tell like just like silly like romance stuff or like just stuff that's very lighthearted I think that's how I'm kind of dealing with it right now and just letting myself like be into this stuff and be inspired by it and like like if I want to make something like that then I want to like let myself do that and not be like because I feel like a lot of artists like they're like oh I want to make this thing but it, everyone will think it's stupid like I don't know I feel like that's the, the best way to deal with creative block is just to make stuff for yourself yeah um, yeah mm -hmm. and just like just like what you like and experience what you like. Um, I don't know. Cause like, like, like those like magical girl mangas are like probably one of the earliest forms of like storytelling. Like I was exposed to and like going back and reading them is like inspiring because like the art is beautiful. And even though sometimes the story isn't like amazing, it's still fun. Mm -hmm. So I think just like reading stuff that's fun and like, that you enjoy is like really important and not feeling like you have to create all the time because I definitely am like I wish I could just like be a machine and create and create but like that's not realistic for me mm -hmm. so just letting myself like watch dumb dumb shows or read dumb stuff and not feel like I have to like and just let it come to me not force it I think when you force it it only makes the burnout worse. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah. So I think that's that's how I kind of deal with it. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. I think that's a great answer. I also agree, like the whole thing about not judging the things that you like. It's a really, because sometimes you go to art school and people are like kind of uppity mm -hmm. type about like, well, this is the right kind of art and this is not the right kind of art. And it's like, no, like at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah exactly you can yeah. just you can like whatever you want to like and that's that's okay like yeah I, everything like even if you ended up making something like that and you're like I don't know if I want to post it or you end up posting it there will probably be an audience for it because like other people are probably like also feeling like oh I'm I'm too embarrassed to like like this but like then they read it and yeah I don't know <laughs> <laughs> very true mm -hmm. well i thought that was a great episode that was so fun to oh, thank you. talk about all these different topics um yeah. is there anything that you want to plug while you're on the show um uh, i don't know that's <laughs> if not that's okay um no. can i plug you guys to read v's comic rodney <laughs> <laughs> um i feel like like sometimes i one of the things i got into during the pandemic was streaming uh a good friend katie started doing it and i was like that looks kind of fun you can like like i hired someone to like make a, a silly like a little vtuber um and stream with that and i really enjoyed it and uh my my username is Dottie Dog, so I'm a little like dog person. I haven't streamed in a while just because um, directing has been pretty demanding and finding the time to do like have, like energy because I think streaming takes like a ton of energy because you have to be so engaged. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so whenever I, I hope to get back to that soon. And I want to like do like drawing streams because it's really nice to just like stream of consciousness draw and just yes <laughs> um but yeah that was like a really fun hobby to get into during the pandemic yeah but i, I agree. guess that's I feel it like... i don't know <laughs> no that's a great plug love it well i guess that's the end of this creative block megan thanks for being our guest and sharing your story yeah thank you for having me and thanks to our listeners. Follow us on Twitter at Creative Block. That's creative without the vowels, where we ask for drawing prompts and questions to ask our guests. Huge thanks to our editor Clemens for editing the podcast and Malik for helping us produce the show. If you love our show, then support us on Patreon. Becoming a patron 
gets you early access to interviews as well as bonus episodes. Click the link in the description of this episode. I've been your host, V, and Jean will be back sometime soon. <laughs> uh, keep being creative, and we'll see you next week. Bye, Bye. everybody.